Hi, Debbie Dashinger here, live on Facebook. And I am here to share whatever comes up, but really, I'm here to talk about media magic, media madness, and what is possible with media. So my friend Catherine, who talks about social engagement and uh, how to connect with your audience and said, Debbie, you gotta get on this Facebook Live thing. So here I be sharing with you just a little bit before I've got a phone call with a client and also a little bit before I go do mindfulness meditation. Uh, so what can I share with you that's groovy and cool about media? What's really interesting is most people don't know how to use it. When I was being interviewed yesterday, somebody was saying like, what's the number one thing people can do wrong that they should learn from? And I'll tell you the number one thing that people do wrong is they get very excited about media. It is accessible. And so brump, 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 like a pony, they go forward, but they don't have all the right pieces in place. Therefore, they present themselves in a really poo-poo way. And most of us who are getting a gazillion emails and suggestions and everything every day professionally about who can come on our show or who we can work with and so forth, uh, we are pretty quick to say, mm, the professionals can come through the door, the others, you're just not ready for prime time, baby. So we want you to be ready for prime time because basically media is free. It's free and it can promote you in a huge way. Whatever your message is, your book is, your speaking is, your products, you are here for a reason, right? And you know what you know for a reason. So here's some things you need. You need a press media kit. And it's so important to know how to put that together. Um, I wish I knew how I looked on this thing because I have no idea. That's why I'm moving it so much because here it looks really weird. I look like I'm in a fisheye lens and I don't like that look. Um, so yeah, you need a press media kit. What's that? Well, that's basically your picture. If you've got a one sheet, we call it, about who you are, what you've done, that include awards, your website, your contact information, your publicist, if you have one, and if you don't, just give us your email, phone number, a website, any awards and accolades. And the first sentence should always be, your name and exactly what you do out in the world. So if that's all we ever read, we get a real clear picture of what your gift is and what you're presenting. Then under the pitch, and the pitch is basically, hi Debbie, I know about your show, I love what you do, I really love Dare to Dream Radio, and I'd, I think I'd be a great guest, and here's what I would give to your audience. Remember, it's not about you, it's about what you're gonna gift to the audience through your wisdom and other things. So, I might say, if it was me pitching, I might say, I have a done for you best-selling book launch program. It's under HTTP, mybestsellerbook.com. And here's what I'm gonna teach your audience. How to become an author, how you can write a book in 30 days or less. What is possible if you write a book? Remember, 5% is writing and 95% is what you do after the book. So if that's true, don't just let your book sit out on Digital World or on a shelf. Come to me, hire me, and I'm gonna tell you exactly how to create your book into a bestseller. And I'm gonna share with your audience some tried and true secret tips about books they don't know. Maybe I'd be pitching instead to a magazine, radio, television show, completely different, how can you be interviewed and be exquisite? I'm gonna tell your audience how to do three key messages. This is what I coach and consult all my clients in. So, why this is wonderful is it tells the radio host or magazine why you'd be a great guest. That's first of all. Second of all, it lets them know what they and their audience can learn, and if you're a fit, that you're actually gonna present stuff that's important and new and interesting and it's very content driven. And it gives them some talking points, what they can address with you, what they can readily ask about you so they don't have to do really a ton of research. Your pitch letter again should come with your bio, your headshot, and your bio must be smashing. And usually for media, you want a short bio and a very long bio. So I think in this moment, that's all I'm gonna say right now about books and about getting yourself on a show. But just know also when you show up, it's good to be coached because it's really good to know how to volley questions back and forth. 
Why is that important? Because sometimes people come from speaking on stage and they're really used to taking over for 20, 60 minutes and just teaching. That's deaf on the radio. Like, <laughs> nobody wants to hear that. You're gonna lose your audience and guess what? They got a dial and they can change it or they've got internet or something like that. We wanna keep them wrapped and moving forward. How do we do that? Stories, anecdotes, find ways to teach in really succinct, small ways. Key message yourself, really keep it down. Thanks guys for joining. I see all of you coming on and that's so awesome. And I hope you're learning something. If you have questions, you can post them and hopefully my battery doesn't die uh, before I share whatever you might wanna ask about. But that's what you do. That's how you keep the conversation going. And I wanna say it's a little bit like dating, right? So when you do an interview, you don't just wanna be super dry and straight and blah, 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 you know, information, unless you're a scientist and that could be groovy and work for you. But in general, you really wanna say, let's be honest, or I'll tell you my thing. If I'm gonna date somebody, I'm not gonna give up everything about who I am and who I be and my childhood and all that in the first date. This is a meet and greet. I'm getting to know you. I'm gonna give you this much and hopefully you'll give me this much that will make me lean in and wanna know more and be intrigued and compelled to hang out with you yet another time. And then the next time I'm gonna dish up a little more. I'm that way anyway. I tend to open up like that. Um, until I super know I could, sorry, Scorpio moon, until I super know that I can love, like, trust, and know somebody, and then, oh my God, we're gonna laugh our asses off and have a great time and go deep. So that's just who I be, but I would highly recommend you do your interviews like that, and what I mean specifically is, don't just, you can't go blah in five minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, and then we can't absorb all that information, but key in on one to three things that you wanna share in that hour only, that's all you need. You can build an entire interview around that and be fascinating. And by the way, at the end, have a giveaway. Have a gift. If you go to my website, then you can, oh my God, Barry Jenks, I used to be in love with you and as a little girl and you lived down the block. Hi, it's so great to have you here. Um, so yeah, you can give something away. If you go to my website, debbie-inger.com slash radio, actually you'll get a bunch of free tips about radio and more about how to do this, some free videos and stuff. So always have a free gift. It drives people to your website. You get to collect a name and, and an email for your database, but also you, most importantly, frankly, you get to develop relationship with people. Like how cool is that to start a relationship with those who will know you and like you over time and wanna work with you? Um, I'd love to come up with some stories and uh, a lot of what I do with my clients around books, radio, consulting, done for them programs is I love to deliver so I always do, it's a guaranteed service, but what I really love is strategy calls. And I'll tell you why. Because for me, it's super interesting to find out who somebody is and what they're doing out in the world. Part of that is the information they give me when I work with them, and part of that is the energy I read from people. And I can see someone's gift and I can see what gets in their way. The beauty of it is, how can we move that away, and I know how, and how can we bring forward what they're really here to gift and deliver to the world? That's what I'm all about. Because we all came here for great purpose and we're all doing completely different things in our lives, yeah? And so if we're a piece of the puzzle of heaven on earth, how are we to deliver that out into the world? Well, it's all about just aligning yourself with what your gift is. So here's, I'll just give you a little interesting conversation. I've got a client right now, book client. She's registered with the um, mybestsellerbook.com. We're going to do a huge book launch. This is someone big. She's got a lot of, a great team around her, a lot of support, a lot of big name people have written endorsements for her book. And I got a call um, from somebody today who was really concerned about her time. She's got an enormous amount going on, enormous amount she, she's creating, but also in her life, she has a family member who is not doing well. They have stage four cancer, so she's really going through a lot while she's doing this launch. And this person was very concerned for our client. But I have a different point of view. I have an interesting point of view, but it's also always like, what else is possible here? 
what would it be like if my client, our client, instead of hiding behind or trying to catch up in the amount of time she has, what if instead she was so authentic and when she's being interviewed and when she's going around the planet speaking and everything, that there is no veil between her and her audience or the host or the magazine. And what if every time we set her up in an interview, she shows up and yes, she's creating so huge, I'm not gonna give you the names, you'd know them, <laughs> including the Pope and I'm not kidding. Uh, but what if she said all that plus delivered her amazing message and somewhere in there she was able to say, and what an incredible difficult time this is for me. My brother is dying of cancer right now. My life is spinning a little bit out of control. I teach about leadership and I'm telling you this is how a leader shows up. How amazing and authentic would that be if she was able to do that? How many people's hearts would open? How many people would resonate with her message and love her? and like her and want to do business with her even more. And I am not saying, by the way, never, never to use something to manipulate, never. I am saying that what we're all really hungry for is connection. And the most beautiful thing we could do in connecting with each other is to be real in the moment with exactly what is. This woman has a tremendous amount of gifts, a wise and wonderful message, she has lots of keys that she is here to share and she is going through something that is incredibly human and would open our hearts and doors for deeper connection. So that's something I highly recommend you use. I'm going to switch arms because mama mia, I see why you need like a selfie stick for something like this. What else? If you guys have questions, by the way, you always send a representative on the first date. Ah, <laughs> that's my friend Jack. Oh God, thank you, Jack. That was a good laugh. Yeah, you always send a representative, like <laughs> to meet and greet. Um, if you have any questions, by the way, about how to create a best-selling book and all of that, let me know also about how to uh, do radio interviews, how to book yourself, and whatever I can answer for you, I'm happy to just type it in and I'll get it answered. Um, and I have some, so here's something that I'm up to right now. I work a lot, I work hard. And there's something I miss and I got really clear. I did the Hoffman process recently in September and I realized when I left there, holy shit, I fucking miss having fun so much. Are you allowed to say fucking on Facebook? Well, I said first date, so why not fucking? So anyway, I miss having fun. Like I miss laughing my ass off. I miss doing nothing and I miss, so when I came back, I got myself a, one of these books that has outlines of things you can draw. And so I got crayons and all sorts of stuff. And I do that now and then it's super fun. But it's not like the level of fun I mean. I mean, I really, really, really miss having fun and a great time and laughing and just hanging out. So it was recommended to me by somebody, well, what would happen if you married your business and what you're already doing instead of recreating everything and married that with having fun? So I'm just playing around with this, y'all, but I wonder if I put together a travel trip, and Jack, it's not a first date travel trip, but if I put together a trip somewhere in the world and it was massive amounts of fun, plus you got to write a book and learn a little bit about the afterlife of your book once it's written, would you guys come? Do you think that would be interesting? I would love to know. Would you join me? Is is so hi Alan Chung. How are you? My God, it's I wish we had wine, Alan. It's so good to see you. Yes, it's mybestsellerbook.com. Um Canadians can get into. I'm kidding you, Alan. I love you. And I do wish I had wine. So you let me know. And the other thing is speaking of wine, and thank you, Alan, who's an amazing like beyond chiropractor. He's a healer, by the way. If you live in Canada, I wish I did. You gotta check him out. Best. Best hands in the business. Um Here's another idea. So some of you know that I'm now a certified Spanish wine specialist and I've taken sommelier classes and I'm just exploring my great, great love of wine. 
So what if I put together a speaking series? I could do a month speaking series and the people come out for food and wine pairings could hear me speak. And I could talk about radio or interviews or creating your dreams or, so y'all have to write to me. If you want my contact, by the way, it's D-E-B-B-I, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R, Debbie Dashinger, it's D-E-B-B-I, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com. There's a contact form right there or mybestsellerbook.com. There's a contact form there, mediamasteryradio.com. Obviously I have 10 domains. <laughs> anyway, let me know if those ideas sound cool to you. You're so amazing too, Alan Chung. And I'm, I'm wine, wanting to find ways that are fun to include what I do, what I know really, just kind of what's been, with the information that's been given to me, why I'm here in this life, and to marry it with fun. So not just me having fun on my own, but everybody to just, maybe I'll need a comedian there. Maybe Jack Lenz will come. That would be awesome. <laughs> You're awesome too, Shanta. Shanta's got a new book out. You have to check it out. She's amazing. She's in one of my classes and boy, is she like a hungry learner. This girl is on fire. I'm telling you. So um, I'm actually about to head into a call because someone arranged for me to have a reading. Very spooky, huh? No, very cool. Someone arranged for me to have a reading, a past life reading, sort of Edgar Casey stuff. So, you know, dude, I'm in. <laughs> it all sounds good to me. I love you guys. If you got something out of this, let me know. If you have questions, let me know, and I'll do it again and answer yo questions, because I want to see you be big out there. And remember, I've always said I could put a plumber on radio and make him or her sound incredible. It's all about what do you know that nobody else knows? That's it. We've heard everything, right? It's pretty much going to be something we've heard before, but it's going to be coming through your filter in a way we've never heard. So what is it you want to know? Let me know. And because I love you so much, I was going to address it at another time. Thank you for joining me on Facebook Live. I love you. Let's have fun. Peace out, everybody. Mwah. Ten comments. How are you supposed to do that? Well, I'll find out. Bye. Wish me luck on my reading. La la.